Hello, I'm Stephen Monkey Mason, and welcome to the podcast for Exists. I'm pressing play right now. Right, this is one of my throwaway podcasts. It's the middle of the day, so apologies in advance if there's a knock at the door, the phone rings, or something like that. It's just going um, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I've got a lot of like transferring to do, and uh, I've just finished filming one of my room tours. You didn't even know that. Again, um, I was going to do Blood Cabin, but. Uh, sort of reflect on this. So I'm going in this pretty blind even though it's got a three part documentary in it as I say I just looking at the watching right since 1987 there's been over three book films. I just thought it'd be interesting to do a Bigfoot. Uh, I'm just trying to read that quite quickly. 3,000 Bigfoot sightings. Um, I'm a massive believer in Bigfoot and the Loch Ness and then I don't believe anyone landed on the moon. I just believe Google would have put a, uh, a fucking camera on the moon by now. Um, but I thought this would be pretty cool. Now I picked this up not knowing what it was about and it's from the director of uh, the Blair Witch Project and it's went under the radar is available in other countries on Blu-ray um, really hard to get a hold of on DVD now it just seems to have lost the dream uh, it's a found footage film um, I'm always a bit curious about found footage from being somebody who's filmed his life now for 20 years of life you know what I mean not saying every day and every second taking a shit every now and again but no it's more like you know what I mean these these moments where you know, you've got multiple camera angles and how it's captured and how it's uh, like sort of pushed across on the camera. But I love the mythology of trying to find Bigfoot as well as like, oh, go to the Loch Ness, you find the Loch Ness, that's it. But like a lot of people don't realise the Loch Ness is like 26 miles long or something like that. It's ridiculous. Look at that man, firework display. But yeah, not going into like, I mean, there's a lot of Bigfoot films out there. I've seen some right stinkers. There was almost um, uh, a a good, the bad, and the what the fucks for Bigfoot movies. Unfortunately, a lot of me Bigfoot movies are probably in a charity shop now. Thank you very much, missus. Um, but yeah, I was every time there's a Bigfoot film coming out, I watched it. The Bigfoot tapes is one that really got me because of fucking. Ugh, it turned into hillbilly rape, and then you end up with fucking Bigfoot at the end. Um, other ones are like people chained together. I've seen a one called American Bigfoot with Zach from the Gremlins. That just looks some, like some guy running around in a suit. Uh, this is by far one of the best Bigfoots to be brought out. And again, it's the guy who did the Blair Witch, so it's got that eeriness about it. Um, there you go, cheese scratching, fire forests. Um, yeah, the st main story is it's typical. Uh, a group of people going to the woods, want to stay at a log cabin. They're not looking for Bigfoot, I don't think, but even here, slow motion stuff. Um, it's always interesting. I mean, it's been something I've been interested to do for a while. Um, when you just throw people into it and you basically go, right, this is the crack. And then you let everyone little ab, ab lib a lot of it, you know what I mean? But it's a coverage. I mean, the idea structurally, this is the scene and then we burn in the beard. How are you? Um, I think of, you know what I mean? It's just like when you have a film like this, where well, it can be loose where, yeah, they've got a plot and all that. But again, it's just the chemistry. It's good casting or prior friendship um the grueling of the shoot in like cameras are rolling and you're going to capture it but it takes a fucking good editor and someone who knows what they're looking for to make stuff work like cause you, ha you haven't got a lot of time to like introduce these characters because it's a found footage film oh there you go there you go so it doesn't hang around they just ran over bigfoot's kid um when you freeze frame it down obviously you get the reveal later on that that's what it was but again, the uh, the camera angle coverage there of camera at, um, at the windscreen, and then everyone's got a camera. I mean, you can do it with phones now, but it doesn't bring in like the fucking vertical, like typical phone. No one really turns it the wrong way around. That's a bit damaged. There you go. There goes my phone. Sorry. Sorry. What are you doing in the hallway? Yeah. So like. Yeah, I do like this. I remember watching it and I felt intense by the end of it. When this thing chases you, you're going to fucking run. There you go. Night scope. Quite an uncommon thing now on a lot of cameras. Night scope. Even though it's a um, common thing. At least they haven't done the whole battery life thing on it. But see, another film that's really good is The Lost Coast Tapes. If you've seen that, that's another found footage film. Where if you're watching it, it's not Bigfoot, it's aliens. But um, the fucking way they've hid the fucking creatures in the shot when you're looking at it. It's fucking class. Another one, Frankenstein Theory. When you first see the Frankenstein monster in that, you're like, fuck, run from that. 
But then the other ones you get and just fucking hilariously funny. Even Bobcat Goodworth, Willow Creek. Bobcat Goodworth, also known as Zed from Police Academy, he did a, like a found footage film of the Bigfoot. But like, oh, shit yourself. But like, where I live, you can go five five miles into the woods and you, you're in the woods. But like, you, you're quite safe. I mean, recently I was walking up the river with Brittany, and. Um, you know, producer, like, where's the path? And I was like, well, don't worry about the path, man. We're not, not far. Follow the river. Um, there you go. And the reveal there, like the hit summit. Slow motion down. You can see it's just a guy in the suit. The nice little reveal, that. Um, oh, repeated, repeated, repeated. Slowing it down, slowing it down. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's kind of like... In America, you see how vast them forests are, and you think, well, it's fucking easy to get lost. Just look at the movie The Edge. <laughs> the wide scope. You know what I mean? But someone's always got, like, a funky fucking... I've seen too much X-Files recently. I don't think anyone in this is in the X-Files, but... Um, even the, like, the idea of, like, it's always somebody's got, like, a creepy cabin out there in the woods. Um, just even a hideaway, like, in Watchers and stuff like that, so... Yeah. Big fan of the Bigfoot. Um, I forget which movie it is. It's not going to be this movie because they're already at the cabins, but there's a Bigfoot movie, and it might be the Lost Coast tapes where they go to like a, a shop and like um, it's like carved statues of Bigfoot. I've got a Bigfoot action figure. Um, I think there's a Bigfoot pop vinyl. I've never got around to getting one, like. But yeah, I just think this is the one movie where you're like, oh yeah, let's watch a Bigfoot. Not Harry and the Hendersons or Bigfoot and the Hendersons. Uh, this is a fucking run, run, run scenario. I also think, as well, found footage films work better when the unknown actors. Um, going back to the Frankenstein theory, um, if anyone remembers My Little Eye, which was again a very creepy ass movie, but if you watch it now, Bradley Cooper's in the fucker. Um, but there, uh, one of the lads from there who fucking works it out, he's actually the star of uh, the Frankenstein, Frankenstein theory, and sort of like. Ah, it takes it out of it a bit. It's the best thing to do is cast unknown actors. But yeah, I've been... Don't get us wrong, I've toyed around with this idea quite a few times. Again, it's coverage. Um, I think personally the way to do it is just film it like fully through a few times, you know what I mean? And again, it's the best take, it's the best angle, but then it's... It's the decision to make, do you keep plot holes in it when you're trying to make it a movie? Or do you have the camera angle going, hang on a minute, this is maybe a found footage film. And like, it's kind of like, that angle is so forced. You know, like, I mean, it's the, got the, it's the best angle in the room. And like, fair enough, like, you know, everyone, like, people who do this and have this kind of camera equipment are going to be like media students. So yes, maybe they are going to go, well, this would be a good angle for this. But then sometimes you're like, oh, fucking hell. You know, I think faults in it work a bit better. Look at that, man. Imagine going to stay there. <clears throat> Sexual humour. <laughs> Using his dick as a torch. Well done. I know, um... As I said, I've done a review for this. Um, it's one of my first review ran randoms, actually. It's either the first, I think it is actually the first. Because I used to do the whole fast forward reviews one where you're jumping around, you write a script, you then have to send your script off to the magazine to get it approved. Remember, don't swear. And after, like, I was really, like, disparting away from the. Uh, oh, is that a raccoon? Is it a raccoon? <laughs> I would fucking run away from it. No, no, it's a fucking pig. Again, class. I mean, again, though, what you would do with that, right, is a great scare. Is get like all the cameras there, right? You're going to go in there, open the room. Probably get the guy know who's going to do it, or one of them know it, so you make sure you get the best camera angles possible, and then boom. Now, to stay there, does anything creep in? Have like, don't tell them that there's a fucking warthog in that cupboard, and then I go. I mean, who's filming that? Like a creep. So again, you, you kind of wonder, like, is it standing there? Is it in the glooms? 
This film really, really captures you on the fucking fly here. I mean, even there, it's out of focus, but then is it delivery out of focus? Fucking eyes look terrifying in night vision. See there, what's that loom in the background? You're always like, ooh. There you go, you can see the GoPro stuck to the dashboard. Ooh. Oh, switch car headlights on. Oh, trees fell down right in front of them. Is that where they've parked? One of the funniest Bigfoot movies is Strange Wilderness. If you haven't seen that, you need to check that out. It's a, it's a Happy Madison maneuver, maneuver movie. Uh, basically, they all go looking for Bigfoot. Um, Justin Long, Steve Zahn. Um, it's absolutely fucking hilarious. Like one of the funniest Bigfoot movies you've seen. Um, so yeah, creepiness. Um, one of my ideas, don't mind talking about it on here, was black cats. Um, I live right up in Northumberland. Um, it's weird actually because I was back in Hira, New Zealand, uh, about six months ago before lockdown really fucking kicked off and went into the fucking crazy town. Um, and they've got fucking nothing to worry about up there. Um, and people laugh about the black cat syndrome up here and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, that is not, it's a serious fucking thing. Like, my stepdad's a gameskeeper of like um, a 10 mile radius around Northumberland. And he's fucking scared of the cats. So I was like, well, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, there's no fucking black cats in them woods. And one of the ideas was um, I wanted to do kind of summer like this. But again, you need money. Um, my cousin made dog soldiers. And like, I've told him about them. That's really good. I was like, oh, you're going to give us some money. And it's just like, well, no, because like, <laughs> you can't really have a black cat trained and fuck off in the woods. I mean, it's an insurance nightmare. So then you have to worry on CGI and stuff like that. And he's like, well, write a script. I said, yeah, I never got around to doing it. Um, but yeah, fucking black cat. I do remember um, once, uh, what we call a Gill Bridge, if you check out on the ch channel, uh, or even check out the movie Branches I made, what's free on YouTube, the Gill Bridge is such an iconic area around here. And like um, one night we were all walking up there, high as fuck. Um, look at them mini DV tapes and that. look at that fucking camera, man. I used to have one of them. Like cameras now, that's super small. But again, he's going to show you why the GoPros are working and all that. He's the film buff. He's got the shock cameras. I think he's the one who survives as well. So he would be the one to actually make this movie. But yeah, we were all walking up there one night in the woods and uh, it was dead creepy. Um, the sun had just gone down, so you can see it had that very coolness of blue, and we're all, you could see the path, you know, the path that everyone walks through, through the grass, and, um, there's bits and pieces of this on camera, but it's somewhere in the archive, and, um, it used to be like, oh, look at that, flying in the woods. Um, just remember, the path looked like it was fucking moving, and it was, all of a sudden, everyone fucking legged it, and it was a black lurcher dog, just walking up the path, and we were like, fucking hell, it's black cat. There you go, and GoPros extremists. Um, when I was out filming the other day and up the woods, someone had made loads of uh, them ramps. That's not an easy ramp to make, like. I started uh, reminding myself I was going to do something this week. Not today, though, I've got stuff to do. I'm trying to. As I say, I'm multitasking, I do apologise. I have picked quite a short film, look at that, man. Again though, have them out at the beach, have them having a bit of fun, um, you know, maybe have a couple of stunt guys, but again, you won't risk, see what you get out. God, someone's a proper creep in this. Again though, five people, two boyfriends, two like two couples, one's a creep with the camera, that would be me, <laughs> that would be the creep with the camera. Like nowadays, like if again, I mean, look at this one, yours, like, oh, what was that? But nowadays, it's all like, oh, like, everyone's got a camera. Like 20 years ago, man, it's sort of like, I remember, like, stuff like this. We all went down to what we call the pump house, which is funny enough now, decades later, get turned into a fucking restaurant in the middle of a fucking woods. Um, but we all went down there in the middle of the night, and then my friends came down later and started the scare, and it's just, you can't, oh, they're humping up against a tree. Um, 
Oh, yep, yeah, we've seen Bigfoot. Bigfoot's a pervert. Um, it's just, you have two camera angles and you try to, it's getting so complicated in the edit. Guy's fucking ripped. <laughs> fucking hell. He's just fucking ripped. He's like Bobby Lashley, like fucking pick you and break your back. He's a pervert. But no, um, we'd all went down and we had people come around and like it was this fucking. Like Jack got really scared, Pearson got really scared, and the two camera angles and Casper was filming on night vision and. Again, it's an easy way to make a movie. It just, you, again, right people, right scenario. Because uh, everyone gets scared of the fucking dark. But again, right editor and right director, you know, someone who's got it in. Um, that one's fun with this. Again, no, going back to it, again, you've got this guy who's like years later, he went from the Blair Witch when you had three people and I think two cameras. And you've got that like really left open kind of thing. This time, the budget obviously goes into the Bigfoot himself. Again, hire young actors, unknown actors, and then you're going in the wilderness. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got you on fucking edge. Audio would always be a problem and stuff like this. Not worse than audio on a GoPro when it's in its fucking shutter box. But you're always looking. There's a bit in there that Lost Coast tapes, man, where she's got the camera and she's doing the whole Blair Witch thing. And the camera's like pointing up at her chest and that and just spins around. And it's like four or five frames and these yellow eyes just fucking glow in the background. And you're like, fucking hell, what was that? When that? And it's just so eerie. <laughs> We've always talked about this on podcasts. Like, the realisation of a predator is some of that always startles me. When you realise you've got a fucking 30% chance of survival because you've turned around and there's just a crocodile right next to you because it stealthily came up to you. Oh, Bigfoot footprint. Got a Bigfoot film where he gives a thumbs up at the end of the movie. Again there, like a summer lunch and Again this could work if someone did it about the Loch Ness. You know what I mean? But then you would have to... You, you can kind of cheap out on these. You know what I mean? The, the, like, I mean the, the Blair Witch, I watched the Blair Witch Book of Shadows the other night because the audio commentary on the film is quite interesting. And the director talks about how He's what I mean. I don't think anyone checked his comedy track before they produced it, but it's like he's on about how he didn't want the Marilyn Manson track in. Well, he didn't have any problems with Marilyn Manson, but he wanted some kind of uh, I think classical score. He didn't want the intercuts. He wanted it weirdless enough. Um, he talks about a lot of the weird things, but then if you think about the Blair Witch, like I love the theory that's come out recently that the fact is that like did the two guys kill the girl and stage it all and disappear? Because how else would the tapes be found in the Blair Witch? But then you get the new Blair Witch and the fucking aliens from what I fucking got from that movie fucking running around the house. There's a time-lapse movie, yeah, time-lapse clip. Would the guy do that? Yeah, probably did. I remember putting a camera out this is fucking 2004 and I lived in Spain, I lived in Fingerola and uh, some of the sunsets that night were stunning. One of the nicest sunsets I've ever seen which was cosmic purple. But I think it was the next night or something. Again, you're talking about, it's probably what I was going to say before, it's all memory cards now. Back then, in mini DV tape, you'll get an hour, short player. You want to drop the quality down, you'll get an hour and maybe hour 25 at long player. And that's it. You couldn't afford really, like, you have to take loads of tapes. It used to be like fucking 20 quid for five tapes back in the day. Um, and I just remember, anyway, going back to this story from Spain when this guy gets high and he's fucking little net. Um, freaking out. I would fucking not be like that. Um, I left the camera film the sky as it went down above the buildings and uh, I was like, all right, it's done. And I went to pick the camera up because I only left it for an hour. Fucking hell, I nearly burned Sony in my fucking hand. It was fucking boiling. And I, I don't know how it didn't break the camera. 
but yeah all that to like speed it up speed it up speed it up again going back to blade blade was really good for uh, time lapse and things but time lapse is a big thing now you just do it on your phone click just got to remember that your phone doesn't fall over and smash like happened to me in uh, New Zealand what a day that was though going back to Hira I'd managed to time lapse me help me dad build this letterbox my phone fell off I thought I'd cracked the screen but I hadn't it was just a screen protector and then we're right up on my dad's property I think it's like it must be episode 14 um, if you watch this show um, I fall down the hill and land on the other Sony camera and snap the lens off and the lens has actually been fine since then but I'm just a clutch sometimes I must have been a great impression of my dad I don't see my dad that often live in New Zealand and I live in England but <laughs> I don't think I've ever fell asleep see again no, your mind starts playing tricks here because was there something behind him there in the camera just creeping past him like there behind him right now you're looking and going like what's that because your focus isn't on it and I think this is what really makes this film suspenseful um, it's a great idea I think it's got a really bad box there you go and he's fell out of his fucking net now you see you look, you're looking around you're looking at the shadows You like I am I'm leaning forward now there we go because this film once it starts going it doesn't stop once they know that they're fucked they're fucked fucking creeping around he do it like that but he, here's a thing to do it's like right you get his point of view or has he got the camera on and it's made the choice of cutting between the two and it's kind of like but again because his character has been developed as he's a film fanatic he might do something like that but it's an interesting concept here another film I haven't mentioned yet Troll Hunter Troll Hunter is one of the best films to come along for this kind of thing. And like the end of the day with that though, it's like, all oh, right, there's trolls and like the film takes you on a fucking magical adventure of like fucking Norway. Um, but I think with this as well, this could be a bit more creepier. See, this could be done with cats. It could be done with. I mean, there's a knocking there on the wall, a scratching. It's a very common thing with Bigfoot. Um, it could be done with. Could be done with a fucking rhinoceros. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't have to be a fucking creepy ass animal. Oh, they've chucked fireworks at him, haven't they? Right. Oh, it's paintball guns. I mean, they've got some money. They've got all the equipment and stuff like that. To be young. Oh, the bigfoot cry. And that's scary enough, like. Dinosaur Project, there's another found footage film, Dinosaurs. I seen a trailer for that recently, I was like, oh that looks quite good, and then it came up what it was, and I was like, I don't remember that film being that good. Um it's just say it's a shame that I, I pretty much lost a lot of me Bigfoot films. Throwback, if anyone remembers Throwback from the channel. Um I actually bought that on Blu-ray for a quid. Uh, okay, oh here we're gonna again and I actually was gonna make it a podcast, it's been sitting on the shelf, so expect throwback sometime. I just, I, I, as I say, I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, there's a couple of films I've had sitting on there. I was going to do House of Wax or Blood Cabin. Um, as I say, like a lot of the lads are at work, so I thought, right, get a podcast on the throwaway. This is the one filmed after Double O Kid. Um, creeping at the door. I, they don't see it until it peeks through at them. Such a startling review as well. Again, another thing that I haven't really probably given enough credit to, sound engineering on this. Sound is really important as well, especially the mix, especially jumping between all the cameras. Because um, there you go, there's one of the biggest problems. You've got this many cameras, and like, if it was real, does the audio drop? But then someone watching as average view goes, that sounds shit. And of course, not every camera is going to capture it. And you can't say that one camera was recording the whole thing. Again there, there was definitely something moving in the shadows. That's what makes this film so good. So it could peep through the door, doesn't it? From the director of Blair Witch. See the fingers, like the, the fingers hanging down it looks like Freddy Krueger's fucking like went as a fancy dress costume, the Bigfoot, that's one of the biggest problems. Um, another big problem with the Bigfoot tapes 
if you look at Troll Hunter and then look at the cover for Bigfoot Tapes, it's a proper clone. And Bigfoot Tapes is the one I watched and it's pretty much hillbilly rape. And at the very end when the guy's lying on the floor suffering, Bigfoot takes a walk past. And it's not even that legitimately good. Um, I watched the man who killed Hitler, then the Bigfoot. And then was really like, well fucking hell, the Bigfoot just looks like the guy from uh, Chikawa from uh, Land of the Lost. I want to see my anything with Bigfoot I'm going to watch. But to me, this is the best Bigfoot film. And yes, Abominal. There's another Bigfoot film. That's hard to review outside of fast forward reviews. That's mental. Um, it's a really well made movie. Abominal. I might dig that out. That could be a good one. Um, they're fucking crazy ass Bigfoots. Now this, um, the director also did what the fuck was its name? Oh, it's gonna bug us now. When they've got their fucking aliens in the bellies, and they've got these little ticks, and uh, one guy lives in isolation. It's gonna come to us if I keep talking about it. And his two mates say, "We've got one. We've got one." Oh, there it is, Bigfoot. Fucking creepy ass. Fucking great choice to go on with night vision. Scream. Um, what the fuck is it? And they've got the alien. And um, when the reveal it's behind the bed and it opens its mouth and it's like, what the fuck is that thing? And it eats one of the friends. What the fuck is it called? It's not Area 51. Oh, I'm going to have to fucking IMDB that one. I've got it. I own it. I say I own it. I don't think it survived. I think that might exist in the charity shop. Not that I give my stuff to charity shops. You know, I just lend stuff to people and hey-ho, life moves on. For the better. Let's have a look here. It's fucking Bigfoot. Oh, it's got a totally different cover on IMDb. Far better cover. That is a far better cover on IMDb. I mean, I wouldn't reveal the Bigfoot, I would just have the car upside down with a tree stabbed through it. That looks mint. Uh, oh, looks like the cast is one I want to do quite a lot of stuff. Um, I'm on about the director though, because he definitely directed it. Oh, it's not the Blair Witch, it's not VHS. Altered, that was it. He's been part of Supernatural. But yeah, Altered's the movie I was on about. That's not a found footage film, but it's a very eerie alien in the woods. Oh, there you go. So the car hasn't been turned upside down, but it's got a tree right through its windshield and trashed. Again, they're out in the woods. Can't use the phones. Smart. Again, though, this is one of the things, I mean, getting wrong there, like, but there, there's a shot there. The camera's got them all in shot. And then flicks back to them. But where's the camera on that angle? Sorry, just me pointing it out. Between the flick, there's no camera there. There could be a camera where they are, but who's filming that? So should we one of them filming that? So there's one of those things where you can overanalyze it. And I've fucking heard of a bin as well. They complained about when they got here and how dirty it was. Look at all the shit they've got lying around. You see, even that there, the camera angle's a little bit different. He's now in it. I mean, it's blocked, so you can't see the camera angles. And there's the reveal. They knew there was a Bigfoot. Heard the stories. So here goes one of the things. Oh, another film as well. Have I not done the podcast for that? I'm sure I have. Snow Beast. Yeah, Snow Beast is a podcast. There's another one for the foot and the bundle snowman. You know, running around with a suit on. Of course, he's going to ride off and make sure the GoPro's on. But this is one of the scenes that's really startling. The fact that he's on a bike and he sees the Bigfoot chasing him. It's like, fuck. And that's why I think as well, this could have worked with, um, for the Friday the 13th. Because there was talk about doing this. What happens if you went to the woods 
and Jason was there and you know what I mean and like this concept with Jason it would have worked I think they pulled the plug on it didn't they but yeah again angle looking up at him angle looking down but fair enough it is established beforehand where he does the backflip into the water but it's again did, I mean they do find the bike again you've got to think about how he got the memory cards Oh, you know, now again, you can go out there and everything gets transmitted straight away. A lot of the cameras have wireless technology. Firewire isn't a thing anymore. I mean, people don't understand, like, the new generation, like, about, like, oh, click online, whatever. Um, like, back in the day, man, like, you would go, say, for example, like, when I did Stomp 66's music video years ago, and you went out there, and uh, this guy's about to get bushed off this, or you're about to see him run. Um, we filmed Stomp 66 on five different cameras, right? We filmed multiple takes, multiple angles, maxed out loads of tapes, and like every tape would be an hour. So that's an hour upload, then you got to master it. And obviously, as you master and dissect the takes, and then start sorting out the takes to takes, and like mastering green bars. So you can't exactly go home, like, sort of like chuck the tracks on there, and as a lot of people do now. Make me a music video, press the magic button and it breaks it to the beat. Uh, no, totally different. Oh, they found a trapdoor. But yeah, it takes a long time. I mean, this would just be drag and drop, it's digital. But again though, look at, these, look at these shots coming down. See, these films as well, it shouldn't have to go shot to shot. Like, there's a little shot there, a little edit, where it's a like, door opens, clip, someone speaks, clip. And that, that choice to do that smart for found footage film because they can chip chip, you can chip away because like, oh, nothing happens but someone says something. Oh, you found a gun. It doesn't have to cut to a different angle. Don't point that gun. Bum, 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 bum. That gun. <laughs> you know how to use that when he did that, it should have just blew a fucking hole out of someone. Should have blew a hole out of someone, he should have looked back to hear it and that should have distracted him. That's my addition to the film, you can have that. Oh, and now he's trying to fucking phone. See, there, right, it should have been hiding up the tree, just watching him. There should be, like, there probably is shit like that you just completely miss course get off your bike again smart thing no crew anywhere visible I can't remember which video I was in the woods doing a promo for it wasn't this I might have been no it wasn't this and uh, I had Bigfoot walking behind us in the background <laughs> what the fuck was that it was so random it was around that time. The box of blood book my oh You just seen it standing in the woods there. You just seen it. Again, that's realization that you're fucked. There's a predator. That was really cool. That was really well done. I think it was the box of blood. I was uh, someone I was opening it up and I was just in the middle of the woods and I had Look at that! Look at him chasing him. Every time he stepped on Morris dressed up as Bigfoot walking behind us. Look at that! <laughs> fucking chasing him, you would fucking shit yourself. We're just a guy and say, well, Bigfoot is a humanoid. You know what I mean? It's like, and it, the choice to do that in the broad daylight as well, but that's class. This is so intense. Again, it's been set up a boomf. And that is a hell of a fall, mind. Great shot. Like, go, for the, go for the handlebar shot for when he goes flying over the top. Boomf. Is he dead yet? No. He's better get dragged off, though. I don't know if he dies, I think he just gets... <sighs> broken leg. Again, where's the bike land? That's the angle. But see, this is like, again, like, you know, we're invested in it now. It's not like in the Blair Witch where the, 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 the other guy appears, this is the, the other Blair Witch. Where's he, where have you been? It's been weeks. Like, you've been lost in the woods for weeks? What? 
you know, because it's totally out to confuse you what the fuck's going on. At least here, you know, there's a common threat. See, how startling is that? How startling is that? Turns around, it's just standing there looking at him. It's fucking broad daylight. It's like a black outline. He sees it coming from. It's just really well done. It's not playing hide and seek. Where's it gone? I love the t-shirt. Bigfoot hide and seek champion. There you go. Boof. Whole 360 one. And then you get this fucking kind of foot. <laughs> Trump scene. But starting in the movie again though, would you think he was the first to go, being sort of maybe the alpha male in it? Um, I don't think he dies though. Yeah, I, kind of, I definitely believe that outlet didn't survive my uh, transition with the axe, getting it back. Again, I don't know. When it comes to DVD, shit's it buried. But yeah, that was that was a really good scene. It's a really good scene. Again, explain this to people going, oh, have you seen Exist? And they're like, what? It's just this film really, I mean, I, I found it by Miss Q, you know what I mean? Um, it's, you know, my part of my job, and it has been for the last 10 years, is working in visual entertainment, you know what I mean? And this film, you knew nothing about it, and I did, and just found it on the off chance, you know what I mean? Very low key release, which essentially to me is like in the top five of the best Bigfoot films. I have to seriously think about what the top five was though, because I've seen some shit ones, but I've seen some good ones as well. But oh, <laughs> there's a bike just chucked in the wall. Yeah, this would be in the top, in the high top, could be even number one. I say I love that, just get the camera on the floor. But again though, it's a found footage film. There should be bricks in the story. But then again, like you don't have one of them being interviewed about it because you don't want any spoilers. Like, all right, he's in no threat. And it peeks, does it peek at him again? I'm sure we get an eye peek this time. A group and another time lapse, and that camera is still out there. How long has that been time lapsed on for? A group of friends are on an adventure in remote woods in Texas, planning a weekend, fun and partying, but visuals of the careless retreat are shattered when an accident on a dark, distorted country road. In the wake of the accident, they witness a blood clunch and noise. They soon find themselves hunted by something not exactly human, but not completely animal a terrifying urban legend comes to life and seeking murderous revenge that's the back synopsis of the movie there is another film has a very similar front cover and i'm sure it's to do with wolves again they could make a spin-off movie to dog soldiers like this oh yes i heard about up in these woods oh fucking hell it's a, it's a werewolf <laughs> For years, that like my cousin hasn't got anything to do with dog soldiers now. They've all gone off to do other stuff. But for years, there was going to be a dog soldiers fresh meat. I think even Kevin McKidd had filmed some treatment footage for it. Maybe it's that they definitely tried to film a promo to get the financing behind it. Um, but if anyone really wants to know what dogs what happened to the dog soldiers, just check out uh, the descent and um, the bit underneath the cave. Just keep your eye out. There's a dog soldier head dead in the cave. So it's been gotten, even though like the descent set in fucking America. <laughs> Inner jokes. But no, this could work. There's like a dog soldiers. Like what is it? It's a fucking werewolf ruined. <laughs> it's coming for you. Ah, my hands. I think as well on stuff like that, like the gun. Should have been so loud because if I shot a gun in that environment on the cameras, the camera would probably fucking suffer the fucking backlash of that. See, this is why I keep the camera geek alive. 
he's filming. I think she gets dragged out here. One of them get, definitely gets killed here. He's to pull through the door. Excuse me. Here it's a warthog. Fucking hell. I mean, you're constantly looking beyond. Shaky cam. I mean, you just got, I mean, I'm that friend in that situation who would be like, I want to catch this on camera. Like, fucking hell, man. Like, no. <laughs> like, no, nah, no, nah, I need to capture this on camera. Again, one camera, like it's the correct choice to go for. Like you can just stay with us and like it's like nice like soldier. Nicely like dirty camera. I'm sure she gets fucking murdered. The idea of keeping it with one camera and the camera goes down, I mean look at that. Then then he puts the camera down and that's what's really good about this scene as well. The fact that there isn't an alternate angle, I'm sure I've just seen an extra foot. She just had her neck broke. He's meant to pick the camera back up. And the story's got to keep on doing. I wish I could rewind podcast. I'm sure I saw a footstep in there by mistake. So they've left that camera in the house. And down the trap door. And then the camera's just been squished by the fridge. Bit of the next scene. So essentially, so far, we've got the guy on the bike, and then that camera. He's got to come back and get the memory cards for. Unless he's got a wireless hard drive. But again, this film is, because you can do that now. 2003, 2013, so it's seven years old. And he did have some nice equipment, but again. Have I already transferred that? Don't call me. Yeah, so I'm on, on the schedule here. Sorry, I know the film's gone, but I'm just say, multitasking at the times as well. Swiping out 175 gigabytes of fucking footage. And you think I don't film everything? Oh, this is where the eye peeks through the car, but look at that, man. That's a great jump scare. Fucking, that was a great jump scare. That actually, I'm gonna get Brit to watch this one night. Brit, watch this for lights out. Enjoy it. Oh no, Bigfoot. Oh no. It's fucking so intense this movie. That's why I put the lights on. Coming in the door. <laughs> Fair play, everyone. It's a fucking awesome film, this. I seen it in New Zealand on Blu ray, but it was expensive. New Zealand was fucking really weird for um, pricing on shit. Some stuff would be like forty dollars. I mean, if you, again, cheap plug to ITO door. If you watch that, I'm walking around JB mm -hmm. high fives. And I think I, I think like there's a John Cusack film which is terrible called Sydney Alley or something like that. Forty dollars. Then um, some films are like three for five dollars. And you think fuck me. You know what I mean? This is fucking risk it. But New Zealand gets a lot of Blu-rays, and this is one of them. But I wasn't, I wasn't willing to pay that much. Like I probably would if I was back there full time, but not for when I'm like only in Wellington for a couple of days. And I think that me, Sam, and Callum were and Brittany were all going out that night as well. So over time lapse again, one set up on the porch. It's like right, okay. 
it is established he's got fuck loads of cameras at the start yes he's probably got I mean if that was me I would have been straight up there once the coast was clear and get that camera that would have been me oh. like my friends just had a neck broke but like it's on camera <laughs> it's like going back to that time piece and shattered his leg going down the slide and I just point and laughed at him like your friends in pain I know but look it's funny <laughs> sorry P Sorry, I'm just multitasking. Multitasking. August 2017 is what I'm working on. No, it's not. It's 16 I'm working on. Jesus. August. This doesn't line up. Wrong fucking year, man. Needs to be 2016. Sorry, I'm getting confused about what date I need to be in. Right, so September 2009. None of what I'm talking about now makes any sense to the fucking film. There we go. Sorry. I do expect a lot of people to be trying to watch this free online and give me a load of shit. Where's the fucking film? It says a podcast. It just a podcast. If you want this film, it is available in the UK. Rough estimate, brand new price, seven ninety nine, brand new. Right now, it should be five ninety nine, new. But again, it's very, like, it's availability. There we go. Fair enough. The bikes. Oh, see, the Bigfoot took the bike back. So that's how they get the GoPro clips back. I think that is an important scene as well. Um, no one is going to find out what happened. Um, going to, uh, he has the tapes. That's the most important thing about found footage films. At the very end, the footage must exist somehow to somebody to go, oh, look at that. And then someone's going to make a film. Definitely think uh, Friday the 13th would have worked. And now it's a big file. let that go for a while so so he's going to have to go through the characteristics now I mean his girlfriend's just had a neck broke um, again it hasn't killed off one couple it's separated the couples as well he's got that big camera back I don't think there's much um, I mean, you can grade shit like this. They can always grade it. I don't think there's a lot of like drop in quality, um, which sometimes it really annoys us when like, because um, like cameras you can buy in the shops now um, can like treat it right and all that can look amazing, but like there's so much downscale um, against films. And then I mean, you normally get the shitty record in the corner, battery tape always running out. Lost in the woods. Yeah, camera guy survives. He says goodbye to the Bigfoot at the end. Lesson learned don't fuck with Bigfoot. But they're about to find that out because they find the offspring dead, don't they, in the grave? It, the only in that dense of the forest. Again, another thing that really like drops it though as well. Clever here is the guy driving, like is gone. Because at the end of the day, I think especially with me, if I drive somewhere, I've got that sense of direction. But if you're the passenger, it's like you're lost in limbo. Like, you know what I mean? It's that kind of like you lose that sense of direction if you're a passenger, like not paying attention to the road. Sorry about my chair, I've been very careful not to make chair noises. I don't want to touch wood and say no one's fucking rang us or fucking 
Oh, the fine blood. Oh, did they find Matt? I think they do. No, because she's Matt's girlfriend. Found his helmet. Uh, found his helmet. And again, he'll swoop down. He'll swoop down and get that memory card. Of course he does. There you go. I think there was an episode of the X-Files like this. Again, going back to what I just said before, she's screaming, then it cuts, and then it's cut again. It's cut again. Because again, what other angle are you going to go to is that? You can get away, if it's a found footage film, you can get away with cuts like that. And then they had camera distortion. Um, again, no. I'm not being funny, but like, I'll tell you a story about damage footage in a second, but like, there, showing that damage footage thing, it happens at a very dramatic point in the film. It, it, it passes time, it's been used efficiently because it's passing time and like it's now dark. She's had time to deal, there's no awkward conversations about like, obviously, is your boyfriend dead or what. Um, but fucking damage footage always happens at the weirdest times. Um, hiding under a bridge. Uh, I've probably told this story before, but like under this. Um, so when I got back from Spain, uh, I think I filmed about 15 tapes I came back with, you know. Um, and again, uploading them, mastering, and I journaled a lot of tapes back then. And because um, you could, I, like back then, you're talking like mid 2000s, you didn't have hard drives to buy. You know what I mean? You had to like certainly have a good computer with a hard drive built into it, and you would have to put the footage on, and like rely on having the tapes if you were like right if you want to make something you'd have to go through your notes and go right that footage exists on that tape and then you would have a lot of lost footage in the middle of it and um i remember like getting through all the tapes in tape one of spain um i remember getting all the footage done and then my computer um had a power surge and then my camera fucking hit the first tape um and then i didn't get the camera back from the repair shop for months I got it back with the tapes in, do not fucking use. And I like I fucking sliced it up, sellotaped it and gave it one run through the camera. Again, you gotta put it through the camera to get it onto the computer. And uh, there's one digital clip like you've just seen there. Uh, the fucking, honestly, people's eyes, man, on night vision. The iris just totally, like, it's totally worked for horror. Here just fuck that hiding underneath a bridge, can't see shit. One gun. Run! It would be fuck, I would be fucking breaking that leg. I mean, that'd be me filming. <laughs> But again, battery, battery powers. Um, oh, he goes out with psychotic, doesn't he? Oh, that was a stupid one. That I'm scared away like a fucking graboid. He starts chucking bricks at them. And again, it's not an animal, it's fucking clever. I mean, how fucking terrifying that? It's fucking pitch black, right? And it's fucking chucking fucking boulders at you. <laughs> I've actually got that Bigfoot game from back in the day where Bigfoot is at the top of the tower and used to, like, go around it and, like, uh, Bigfoot knocks the boulder down. It's like uh, Willow Creek, when the reveal of its Bigfoot and not at the very end. And after all, like the oh my god, oh my god, it's Bigfoot, and it's just a woman in the fucking woods going, Mow. like, what the fuck? And it just cuts to the Blair Witch and finishes, like, what the fuck? Why am I left with that fucking vision? Back to the Bigfoot tapes, the guy getting hillbilly raped, why am I left with that? At least with this, like, they are dealing with a Bigfoot because it's fucking chucking boulders at them. 
Now this is a great set piece coming up, obviously movies borrowed a little bit from Lost World. Um, the fact that they get into a caravan and the caravan's about to go over the hill, but again it's... it's. Oh, they can hear Matt. I knew Matt wasn't dead. There's a tree, completely uprooted, stubbed in the ground. That is some fucking strength, mind. Uh, the Lost Coast tapes, if you ever see the front cover of that, it's like a massive tree, a shot of the forest and just a body. You know, fucking full on Mortal Kombat, swiped through its body. I find a little fucking grave here, don't I? I love the myth of Bigfoot, like, it's just that myth. I mean, that footage from back in the day, you know, it's so iconic to, like, the Loch Ness, you know what I mean, but... It's kind of like... <laughs> I'm fucking going into its fucking cave. He's the brother, isn't he? I keep forgetting that they're brothers. I'm sorry, like, but you wouldn't fucking see fuck all unless you press that button on right there. <laughs> fucking bless him. Going into a hole, crawling with a camera and a shotgun, I mean. They could have gone and fucking use some duct tape. Camera goes to the phone and goes on a fucking full on doom shot. Be so hard to do. I mean, it makes sense that the Bigfoot would hide under tree roots and shit like that, but. Full on creeping. Matt. Sorry about the chair. Oh, there he is. Found him. God, it looks like Mac Davies as well. I have a feeling he doesn't survive. That's broke both his legs on it. Squeak. Alright. Oh, bone sticking out there. Creepy that shit, like. There you go, there's Doom Vision. Is that in the corner? I mean, how fucking creepy is that, man? Again, the realization there it is creeping in the corner and he's zooming in on its face. That is fucking scary as shit. That is so scary. Oh, shh. Now it makes sense that there is two of them there. That that that's great. That's so scary. I'm only crap not crap myself because it's on a podcast like, but that was that was really scary. He gets dragged away, doesn't he? It might have made more sense if that was the helmet camera. I mean, you're going in a hole anyway. You put the helmet on, but. Just for these shots alone. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't be able to zoom in. Again, making the effort that, it, you know, like, here's the shots there. Oh, you're saved. He definitely doesn't survive. But now, right, so for example, I'm talking about like backing up my podcast right there. Um, it was September 2016 that throwback movie landed in the fucking cat shit tray because 
It's got a file on the computer. It's coincidence that's happened. Fucking hell. So they've got Matt back. Is that nice guy? That'd be. Quickly throw that across, no pun intended, because it's uh, such a small clip. That is one of still is. Yeah, I mean, as much as you can sit and criticise camera shots and all that, I think this is really well done. Um, <laughs> fucking in the caravan now. About to have a fucking incident, like. I mean, again, him, him speaking to his uncle. Um, that sets up how he's saved at the end. I mean, he doesn't get saved. He's sort of like big foot name or like have this fucking eye to eye, right? Done. You know what I mean? Eye for an eye kind of thing. Um, I don't know if there's a Bigfoot episode in the X Files. There's definitely like a native kid running around in one of the earlier episodes and all that urban Bigfoot. Mm -mm -mm. I don't have long left on this, as I say, it's just gone after 3 o'clock now, so I'll check the timestamp. Um, it's got 17 minutes left, it's only on an hour and 17 minutes. Um, hope he's off for a jog. I'll quickly check IMDB, as I don't have Carl. Um, I don't think on my um, last podcast as well I actually give Double O Kid a review. I would say two. The Bigfoot Project. Oh yeah, he's sitting on fireworks. IMDb says if you like this, Willow Creek. Evidence. That's the one I've been looking out for for a while, never seen it. Uh, Bigfoot, the Lost Coast Tapes. It's just called Lost Coast Tapes over here. Um, seventh Moon, not seen it. The Pyramid. Is he getting chased by Bigfoot now, is he? The Tunnel, these are my probably found footage from. Oh, look at that, man. Him getting chased off fucking Bigfoot. I mean, that's his fucking class. I think, oh, the film was a Flight Summit. I remember buying that one. The, uh, that went big for trying to get him. The land on a dinosaur paddock. That's a found footage from Flight 407 or something. That's one I definitely didn't get back. Um, that was quite good. Just looking for facts. And think, oh, he get dragged off by Bigfoot. I think he's definitely going to get murdered. Fucking hell. I mean, he's got the helmet camera on. Look at that man. Chuck straight into a tree, dead. Yeah, but he's dead. He is totally dead. Uh, six foot seven, the second time Brian Steele has played the role of Bigfoot Sasquatch. He originally played the friendlier Harry in Harry the Henderson's TV show. So the guy he played Harry, obviously it was originally called Bigfoot and the Henderson's. I mean, look, so this is quite interesting actually. So he's dead, camera angle is now lying on the floor and this fucking thing there's a camera roll there you go there's a camera roll and helmet there but again filmed in Texas creature effects by Weta Workshop upside down tree shown on the poster originally marked Bigfoot is still planted in Spiderwood Studios film location of Exorcist so, yeah whatever that's all came out in 2015 see there fucking starting to move um, it's had a worldwide release, like. <laughs> and here's the scene from Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's a bad idea. He's pushing the foot in over the edge. Again, all the camera angles obviously setting it up that there's a random camera on there, then that point of view, and there again. 
I remember when we uh, filmed the tournament and we put one of the cameras in one of the cars that did the pipe flip and on impact the footage was fucked he, like we expect to see it in the car and it fly around nah didn't it survive that's what you get that's legit I just remember that footage. Oh, look, mint the car go. Hmm. Such an iconic shot of the tournament. The car hit the uh, hit the um, it's the lemonade van. Tint, tint. Yeah, there's a camera in that car. I just fell broke away. Oh, Matt's still alive. It's just a shot here when you see the Bigfoot come down and land. It's like fuck me. See, it makes sense. One of them didn't survive, and that's her. She's fucked. You would be. Not all of them's gonna walk away from that. Fuck me, that's fucking brutal. There you go, boom. Fucking she died on impact there. Fucking hell, I mean. It's just intense as fuck, this movie. There's nothing funny about this movie at all. It's like, normally with a Bigfoot movie, you're like, oh, you see, like, what the fuck is that? He's gonna get dragged away, isn't he? Try to play dead. Very smart. Play dead. Don't act like a threat to it. It's just gonna pull them away, isn't it? That'll wake them up. You waiting for it? You're just waiting for me to get pulled. There you go. Fucking terrifying. Again, credit the actor. The actors would have been, you know, on point. It's been a mid film, I think. Oh, drops the camera, gets dragged off. I was sure he survived. See there, camera angle, camera just going flat. Then that is the other body. Very clever. Let's hit the tree. So it's collecting all the bodies. And there, let's put them all together. Cotton rock! <laughs> See that there, can't you? Who put all the bodies of Cotton Rock? It was Bigfoot, not a witch. You see Matt still. See Matt not be able to walk. But see again, he's got to get this footage back. He's got the backpack with the cameras. So, yeah, it's Coffin Rock. <laughs> Realisation all the bodies are there. Oh, there you go, that little thing you see in the camera, his chest. There you go. The realization that that's the graveyard yeah, as he sees the baby dead. I mean, given the fact that, 
We're still alive. I was going to say it was the two Bigfoots and he shot one in there. There you go. This is what you did. Meaning, mean that the Bigfoot is a creature itself. It's only done this because it, you know, I mean, it's been provoked. Fucking hell, it's terrifying. Again, the choice to do some of this in broad daylight is really good. Again, wet, wet has done the suit, you know what I mean? You're going to get your fucking money's worth. Saved by his uncle. I've got a shotgun with him. Again, there you go. This is the end of the movie here. Even his uncle gets fucking killed. So that's the one we've got shocks, a big shock ball. That is an amazing big foot. Again, though it's smart enough to know that, that what he's holding is dangerous. His uncle just got fucking killed there. Eh? Fucking size that. Oh, he's doing the whole Blair Witch. Neil and Dad were behind him. Just try to ring us. Casper's trying to ring me. His big foot tries to kill. He's gone. He leaves him. Dead body up the top. Nearly at the end, Casper, don't worry. Right, so how many Bigfoots? I would say this is a solid nine. I don't think you're going to get any better Bigfoot in this film. Um, it's just fucking terrifying. Um, it's grounded the story. It could, it could happen. It's isolated in that. There's only like five members of the cast, including, well, the uncle there. Um, why it happens, they got bang, exists at the end. Fucking asylum font in red. But yeah, um, fell in the hands of the right editor. Great film, absolutely great film. Um, nice throwaway podcast. Um, as I say, fucking terrifying, suspenseful. I mean, if that thing was running after you, you would fucking run. Um, I think finding Matt as well there, as well at the end, he just dies in the fucking crash. Uncle Bob, Bigfoot double. And there's a Jeff. Stunt doubles, quite a few stunt doubles. So yeah, I've been Steve Monkey Mason. I highly recommend you guys checking out the movie Exists. It's fucking awesome. Goodbye for now. Thanks for listening. <laughs>